Lebanon has been plunged into darkness after its two largest power stations were shut down due to a prolonged fuel shortage. Officials say the outage will last several days. Many in the country rely on private generators, but diesel is in short supply. Neighboring Iran has pledged to send more fuel shipments. Lebanon has suffered several power cuts in recent months amid an economic crisis that has seen the value of its currency fall by 90 percent since 2019. The army has been deployed to stop bank runs in Beirut. UW correspondent Razan Salman joins us now from Beirut. Razan, it's good to see you. Power cuts have been an ongoing issue in the country, but now all of Lebanon is without electricity. How did it get to this point? Uh, well, Lebanon's uh, electricity shut down completely after the Al Zahrani and Deir Amar stations uh, ran out of fuel. Uh, uh, the network is, in, is, is very unlikely to work again uh, before Monday or even later, which means that Lebanon will plunge today into total darkness. Uh, 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 this, this is uh, corruption. There has been corruption in uh, the power uh, sector for decades now. And uh, according to... According to the international community, the first condition to offer financial assistance to after reforms has been done in this sector, uh, since more than half of the national debt uh, has been caused to uh, cover the expenses of the sector, around $46 billion in 25 years. Now, people are facing many difficulties there. We've known about the layers of the various crises going on. We saw there were protests in recent days outside a bank in Beirut. People were desperate to withdraw money. And now a mass power outage. Officials saying it's going to take a couple of days. But how are people coping right now? Uh, well, people's account has, has been, have been frozen uh, in banks since uh, the October uprising. Uh, uh, people, ha people have been enduring uh, this economic, this unprecedented econ economic crisis, and now the total uh, plunging into to the total darkness. Uh, people have been relying on private generator, uh, generators, uh, which have been increasingly expensive uh, since they rely on the black market uh, due to shortages uh, in fuel in and diesel, and also uh, because of uh, uh, the devaluation of the local currency against the U.S. dollar. Uh, so basically, whatever the people uh, are earning, they are spending on private generators. Uh, and for example, children are forced to sleep on balconies uh, to avoid the heat. And the people are forced to throw everything they have stored in their fridges uh, because uh, there are power cuts between 18 and 22 hours daily in some of the Lebanese areas. DW correspondent Razan Salman reporting from Beirut. Thank you. Now, the country is struggling with multiple crises after last year's massive explosion in the capital, Beirut, which compounded political and economic woes. Many people are suffering, including those serving in the military. Their wages are worth less and less amid rampant inflation. Now they're finding unusual ways to increase their earnings. Captain Hassan Sruan never thought it would come to this. A highly trained military pilot for more than a decade, he now spends part of his working day as a tour guide. Because we're uh, facing an economical crisis now uh, in Lebanon, so the army wanted to, to lessen the impact of this crisis on the Lebanese citizens. The army now is seeking to be a productive army. That means taking tourists on sightseeing joyrides. In normal times, he'd be using this chopper to train the next generation of pilots. But now the armed forces are trying to make some cash. 150 US dollars gets you 15 minutes up here to see Lebanon from above. The money goes towards maintaining this lead. And while it doesn't seem like much, it comes in the much needed fresh currency. From above, the country is breathtaking, but on the ground, life now is hard. We've hidden this soldier's identity because he fears reprisals for speaking up. Lebanon's two-year-old economic crisis has hurt people's incomes and everyday lives, but for many soldiers, it's also a test of loyalty. I joined the army because I love my country and I wanted to secure my future. 
Now I force myself to get out of bed and arrive at my workplace all depressed. My wife asks me, why are you so angry? I tell her, life is unbearable. Before the crisis, George earned the equivalent of around 800 euros a month. But chronic hyperinflation means he now takes home less than a tenth of that. So he has to spend all his spare time moonlighting, doing anything that will pay. I'm constantly looking for work. I would collect garbage if I had to, just to survive with my family. Now he just wants out of the army, but the policy is no one can leave. Some are doing it anyway. Across town, I meet infantry soldier Ali, not his real name, who's on the run. I'm still not fully convinced of my decision. In the beginning, I didn't want to leave. But it's been two years in this situation. In this tough situation, I don't have the capacity to survive anymore. In the end, I have a family and this is a responsibility. Ali made several official applications to leave, but each time he was rejected. So he says he had no choice, and now fears for his life. Uh, I'm sitting at home all anxious at the sounds of cars. I go to check to make sure no police or army cars are around to come catch me. If they do, I could go to jail. What mistake have I done to deserve that? Just one of the many men and women in Lebanon who signed up to defend their country that now feel they're being left to fend for themselves.